If I knew the public speaking tips that I'm about to share with you today, when I was in my teens or when I was in college, it would have completely changed everything about the way I did presentations, how I led meetings, how I communicated in general. It would have taken everything I did to a completely different level. Welcome everybody, I'm Matt. If you're new to the channel, we produce motivational content and study inspiring people. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. Before I share with you the public speaking truths that I wish I knew sooner, let me tell you a quick story. And let me know if you've ever had something similar like this happen to you. I'm in my early 20s. I'm in a job with a new project team for the first time. There's about 12 people in the room. The director who was leading the meeting stands up and he says, okay guys, we're gonna take turns, go around in a circle. Everyone has to introduce themselves and tell us something interesting about you. My heart starts beating a bit faster. I'm thinking, okay, something interesting. Oh, no, that's not interesting. Do I have anything interesting to say about myself? But it's okay. I, I didn't have to worry too much because fortunately, the circle was starting at the other side of the room. So I had loads of time as it went around to think of something to say. But as people would stand up and sit back down, stand up and sit back down, and it got closer and closer to me, I suddenly realized I was spending a lot less time listening to what everyone else was saying, what was interesting about them, what their names were, and a lot more my focus on myself, wondering what I was gonna say. Eventually, it comes to me, the director gestures at me, and says, okay, and yourself next. I stand up, my eyes were darting a bit around the room, and I said, hi everyone, I'm Matt. I did the high skydive in the world in Australia a few years ago, even though I'm scared of heights. And I sat down. I couldn't sit down quick enough. I was actually sitting down before I even finished talking. My nerves got the most of me in that situation. I didn't put my best self forward. Has this ever happened to you? Have you been in a situation like that where your nerves or anxiety got in the way of you performing at your best? I knew at this point that I couldn't go on like this. I couldn't keep feeling this nervous, this anxious every time I was public speaking. So I used that incident as motivation to join a public speaking club where I got to practice every single week and study the craft. Now, along this journey, I've learned some tips that have really helped accelerate my communication skills and my ability to speak in public. The first public speaking truth that I wish I knew sooner is that you don't get better at public speaking with age. You know, I used to think when I was in my teens, I used to say, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm nervous at public speaking now, but when I'm in college, I'll be fine then, I'll be more confident. And then I got into college and I was still nervous. And then I used to say to myself, okay, yeah, but when I join the workforce, I'll be better. And then I joined the workforce. I was still nervous. And I noticed something else then. I noticed that I saw 30 year olds, 40 year olds, 50 year olds, people who were on the brink of retirement, who were terrified of public speaking, whose eyes would be looking down the whole time when they spoke, whose hands would be shaking. This terrified me. I didn't want to be one of those people. I didn't want to spend the next 30 or 40 years being really nervous every time I had to speak in public. The solution, like any skill, if you want to get good at something, you need to practice. You need to literally just accumulate enough hours, enough experience on stage or in front of a group to build up that resilience, to build up that skill set. So how do you do it? Look for opportunities in work. Take up chances to do presentations, lead meetings, ask questions. Whenever there's the opportunity for you to practice public speaking, take it. And you're gonna be so glad you did. You don't want to be the person who dreads public speaking for the next 30 or 40 years. Find a way to practice it and you will get good at it. Make sure you have an outlet, public speaking. The second thing that I wish I knew about public speaking sooner is that before I went up to speak, I was much better off focusing on being relaxed and calm rather than running through my mind what I'm gonna say. Before you go up to speak, before you give a presentation, it's like you get a shot of adrenaline. You have this burst of energy. It makes your senses, your reflexes, your reactions all heightened. But the problem is this isn't a great state to be in when you're speaking. So the first thing I do is I just focus on calming down as much as possible. And to do this, 
I'd focus on calming the body because the mind is gonna follow the body. So the first step is to focus on the breath. Deep breaths in through the nose with the diaphragm. Make sure that when my eyes move, they're not darting, they're moving, like intentionally slow down the eye movement, intentionally slow down any movement with my body. And then it's like the mind is saying, okay, the body's clearly relaxed now, or the body's relaxing, so I must be safe. And then the mind will relax too. And when that happens, you think far more clearly. I'm actually gonna be doing a full video on how to deal with nervous public speaking. It's gonna be coming up in a few weeks, so make sure to check that out. The other advantage of this is that when you're relaxed, when you're calm, it's way easier to be funny or to tell a joke. When you're locked up, when you feel rigid, when you feel uncomfortable, it's very hard to make people laugh. Even if you say the right words, maybe your face is more locked up, your posture might be too tight, you're not using the same gestures or animation that you normally would to deliver the joke. And because of that, it's way less likely to be funny. So what does that mean? It means that by focusing on being calm, on being relaxed, you're gonna think more clearly, but also you have a much better chance of being funny. And the third public speaking truth that I wish I knew sooner is that unless you're a professional public speaker, unless you're doing a keynote speech, unless you're doing a TEDx talk or something where you're gonna be rehearsing the same material over and over and over for hours and hours, unless you're doing any of those things, I would say do not learn the speech off by heart. Now, why do I say that? Well, I used to try to do it, but there's three main issues I had with it. The first is that if you learn something off by heart, it can often come across as sounding overly rehearsed. It can lack emotion and come across inauthentic. And that's the last thing you wanna do as a speaker. It's gonna break the connection between the audience and yourself. The second issue with it is Learning something off by heart just takes too long. And especially if you do a lot of presentations, if you're doing multiple a week, say they're 30 minutes long each and they're all different. I mean, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself to learn a lot of material. And the third issue with learning a presentation off by heart, word for word, is that if someone interrupts you or if you forget one word, you completely lose track of where you were in your speech. I'd compare it to, you know, the way you learn the alphabet. If someone said to you, okay, what's the letter before G? Do you know it? Or do you have to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G? Or if someone said, what's three letters after M? Do you know it? That's the problem with learning things in sequence like that. We almost need to go through it in that order or we lose track of where we are. So what would I advise? I would say, well, Practice your ideas, practice your key points, and know them really well. Practice that out loud. And it's gonna be different every single time you do it, but it means that if someone interrupts you or if you get stopped for whatever reason, or there's questions or a debate opens up, you can pick things up where they were every time, no problem. The other advantage is that if you learned a speech that's 30 minutes long, and someone said to you, hey, we actually only have 15 minutes today, can you just do it in 15 minutes? Hmm, that's a bit of a challenge. What parts do you cut out? Whereas if you know your key ideas well, and it can go up to 30 minutes, and now you've got 15, you can tailor it to the amount of time you have. And the fourth public speaking truth that I wish I knew sooner was how much getting better at public speaking was gonna impact positively the rest of my life. There's some skills and when you learn them, you get better at that specific skill. But there's other ones. And when you get better at those, they make you better at lots of other different things. And public speaking is like that. You are public speaking, you are communicating in every interaction you have every single day. And your ability to communicate is gonna affect how people see you if they believe you, if they believe in you, if they trust you, if they like you, if they want to follow you. It means that it will affect your ability to be a leader, to persuade, to motivate, to inspire, to make people laugh, to be someone that other people admire. And I mean, the benefits of those qualities, I mean, it's boundless, it's limitless. Those are the qualities that will help you 
land the job in a credit applicant pool that will help you get promoted, negotiate a salary, have this amazing first date where you're put your best self forward, help you make friends, build relationships, maintain relationships. It affects everything. It will give you the confidence to be the real you, to stand up for yourself, to just not hide from the world. Once I realized how public speaking and communication skills were linked to everything that I valued in life, it became clear that this had to be the priority. It was a non-negotiable and that it gave me a big enough reason to follow through with it and pursue it. Guys, it took me years to learn those truths about public speaking. And if you can incorporate it into your own lives, it's gonna have a huge impact in your public speaking and your communication skills, and you will benefit from having positive impacts across all areas of your life. I hope you did enjoy the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We have motivational content and inspiring messages from inspiring people. Let me know if there's any topics or YouTubers you'd like to see me cover in the comments below. That's it for me, guys. I'm Matt. See you next time.